The next presenter is Megan Gleason from USAID in the United States, abstract number 10, finding the remaining unidentified children living with HIV, opportunities through index testing. Ms. Gleason. Hello, my name is Megan Gleason. Today, I will be presenting Finding the Remaining Unidentified Children Living with HIV, Opportunities Through Index Testing, on behalf of my other USAID Office of HIV AIDS Division of Prevention Care and Treatment colleagues, Dr. Mina Srivastava, Dr. Lana Lee, and Dr. Anuk Amzel. Thank you to the International Workshop on HIV Pediatrics and to the conference coordinators for the opportunity to present. The authors of this presentation have nothing to disclose. This presentation was made possible by the support of the American people through the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, under the U.S. President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR. The views of this presentation are those of the authors and do not necessarily represent the views of USAID, PEPFAR, or the United States government. Index testing is an efficient and effective way to identify PLHIV and quickly link them to life-saving ART. Unfortunately, index testing has been slower to scale for pediatrics than it has for adults, and more efforts are needed to maximize this testing modality to close the gap in case identification for pediatrics, or the first 95 of UNAIDS 95-95-95 goals. In this analysis, we sought to better understand the index testing gap by estimating the number of biological children less than 15 years of age that could be tested and subsequently identified if all women living with HIV, or WLHIV, 15 to 49 years old on ART, not yet indexed, were offered and provided index testing services. We used PEPFAR program data, total fertility rates, and age-adjusted fertility rates as determined by DHS, the Demographic and Health Survey, and UNAIDS AIDS Info 2019 results. We analyzed data from 23 PEPFAR-supported countries identified here. Our first step in the analysis was to reveal the significant gap in WLHIV on ART offered index testing through the use of PEPFAR program data. We found that only 38% of WLHIV on ART have actually been offered index testing, leaving a gap of over 4.8 million women who could benefit from index testing. Next, we applied total fertility rates of each country to the WLHIV on ART gap to estimate these women may have 33,209,196 biological children that could be elicited for testing. We then applied each country's pediatric testing yield, the results from fiscal year 20 Q3 PUPFAR data, which range from 0.9% to 9.5%. This gave us an estimated total of 1,520,259 biological children of these WLHIV on ART who could possibly be identified as a child living with HIV or CLHIV. However, because the total fertility rate is the number of children born to a woman over her entire lifetime, we adjusted our calculation using age-specific total fertility rate. This takes into account younger women who do not have as many biological children as older women. This adjustment then estimates 762,234 CLHIV could be identified. We then adjusted our calculation again to account for under-5 mortality and HIV-related mortality, as we know children die before testing, diagnosis, diagnosis, and linkage to ART. This adjustment revealed the final estimated number of biological children of WLHIV on ART that could be identified as CLHIV as 513,215. We then compare this final estimation to UNAIDS estimated treatment gap in CLHIV. UNAIDS estimates about 609,320 CLHIV in these 23 countries have not yet been diagnosed. 
Compared to our estimate, we see that there's potential to identify up to 84% of these yet to be identified or diagnosed CLHIV through index testing their biological mothers who are HIV positive already on ART. In conclusion, by using our gross estimate approach, we estimate index testing has the potential to identify 513,215,000 215 children and greatly improve the treatment gap for CLHIV globally and increase the number of children on ART by up to 50%. There are several limitations to this analysis listed here. In the interest of time, I will not review them all in depth. However, the authors are taking these limitations into consideration as we continue with next steps on this analysis. We understand that with a more granu- with more granular data, we can have an even more refined prediction of the index testing gap for CLHIV. We recommend that implementing partners supported through USAID PEPFAR should conduct a baseline chart review to identify the current index testing coverage of all WLHIV on ART and identify which WLHIV on ART have children with unknown status. We then encourage that there is immediate testing and prompt linkage to ART for any newly identified CLHIV. For next steps, the authors will continue to refine this analysis to reflect an even more accurate estimate of the opportunities that index testing has in closing the first 95 gap for children living with HIV. Thank you for your time.